An election petition tribunal moves from Katsina all the way from its state capital to Abuja, citing security concerns. Now, according to the Belinda and Bill Gates Foundation, Nigeria will not achieve the sustainable development goals in health and education by 2020. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The Governorship, National Assembly and Houses of Assembly Elections Petition Tribunal in Katsina State has shifted its sitting venue to Abuja. Now, the Katsina Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Alhaji Salisu Majigiri, uh, also confirmed the development. The Speaker, House of Representatives Femi Wadabiamila, recently visited Katsina State to assess the level of insecurity with a view to finding lasting solutions. I'm being joined in the studio by Obi Ajewa. Uh, she is a lawyer. We'll start uh, by looking at the security concerns in Katsina. Now, just something worthy of note is that the president is from Katsina State. This is his home state. And the, the issues in Katsina have been going on for so long, so bad, that an election tribunal is moving to sit in Abuja. What does this even say about the level of insecurity in that axis? It means that, first of all, the governor is a failure. The police architecture is a failure in that state. And also the military architecture is a failure in that state. And it means that the entire security ap apparatus of Nigeria has failed in that state. Interesting. You know that we would talk about the issue of insecurity based on where the box stops. Mm. But half the time we have local government chairmen or CDCs, that's mm. what we call them. We have um, house, houses of assembly mm. members. Then of course the governor, which is on paper, the chief security officer mm. of that state. We have a commissioner of police mm -hmm. who's also in charge of security. Mm -hmm. We have JTFs. In this. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to paint a picture. Yes, we talk about the banditry in um, Zamfara, we talk about the Northeast and Boko Haram or ISWAP, but the pockets of violence in places that maybe they don't hardly, hardly make the news, but who, all of these people who are occupying these uh, this positions and getting paid to occupy those positions, what have they said and done in the area of insecurity? Well, they haven't said much. The last I heard, which I found out made my day, was when I saw the governor um, having a meeting with a bandit that should either be locked up or shot on the leg for him not to escape mm. and be locked up. And he's having a meeting with a bandit. That was the height of it. That was seriously the height of it. And I felt that this man doesn't know what his position is and he doesn't know the powers that he has. Talking about not knowing mm -hmm. the powers that you have or not knowing your position, when it comes to issues of insecurity, if they don't come up to this level where we have to be talking about mm -hmm. it on TV, it seems like the, um, there's no strategy uh, of sorts to deal with these issues. And half the time, governors are crying to the presidency to come to their aid. So there are people who have also said that sometimes you have to send officers and men who know the terrain very well. That way they can deal with the issue other than, you know, the way that the police is run. You just, we keep scrambling and, you know, we unscrambling them. Could this also be part of the problem? Let's look at the Southwest. What did they do? They came together to form a joint security team and they pumped a lot of money into the police architecture and made and, and set up local um, people that knew the terrain to work with them. And since things have started cooling down, let's go to the southeast. The same thing, they are doing that. And then River State, Governor Wike pumped in a lot of money into security because without security, you will not have investors. And without investors, you, you, the nation is down. So they should also think about that and th form 
um, go put on their thinking cap and think of a solution to their problem. Okay. The, uh, we, I want to talk about the speaker going visiting Katsina mm -hmm. over the security um, challenges. Um, I, I want to also quote him specifically. He said, we're here to see what is happening on the ground, discuss with the governor and proffer possible solutions to the problem. He said, Nigeria is one country. A state alone cannot deal with this. There must be something we can do to assist. I'm going to ask a question that might not, a lot of people might not like. Mm. If this were a river state, will the speaker go? If this were a cross river state, will the speaker go? Are there special uh, benefits of the state being the state where the presidency is from? A lot of people might not like this question, but we see a speaker going. There are so many places that we're having issues. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the speaker visit there. Could this be because it's the president's state? It might be because of it. And I must explain, I must point out something. The North seems to be the favored place, but still there. In what ways? They seem to be the favored place. They get a lot of um, foreign aid. They get a lot of attention. But yet the problem seems to be multiplying. And what do you think is the... Because, yes, like you said, if there are grants or, you know, aid it mostly goes to the northeast the north mm. central but if there has not been any change or there's not been any any progress what, what do you think might be responsible for you know this this face that has refused to it is know. a traditional setup of the northern states that is the issue the the larger than life rules that emirs play and the fact that there are emirs up here and there are the other ones down here. But that's, but that's detail for traditional stools everywhere. I mean, you have high-class high, high class chiefs, and you have second-class chiefs, and even the third-class chiefs. So mm. that is the ni natural setup in Nigeria. That's the natural setup, but it's more pronounced in the north. The northern, the emirs are almost like gods. And um, whatever they say is final. Fine in the south, the only of Ife is revered, the Alafi of Oyo is revered. Mm -hmm. But you can still say, sir, Kabiesi, if you don't mind, can I suggest something? But in the north, you cannot. So whatever, and the, 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 line, the line of accounting is not very defined. So, but nevertheless, a governor must be able to handle his state. And he should, by, um, Governor Masari should by now know the terrain of his state and know where to plug the loophole. So the election tribunal moving to Abuja is a very sorry state because, first of all, the election tribunal has, should have enough police protection. Except if they are saying that the, the police they have will not be enough to protect them and to protect the venue. So if, it's, if, it, if a state like Katsina is having these kind of problems, so much so that, like you said, let's just loosely say mm. the police is somewhat overwhelmed. Mm. Another thing that the people might not like, should we be calling the army in on this issue? The army is overstretched, as it were, with Boko Haram on the one hand, with them going to, to play in the, in the, in the southeast with Python and pray in the southwest, which I don't understand what they're playing there for when we have real issues to handle. But in cases where it is very difficult, you know the GAMI is supposed to take care of our borders, so they can be called in when things are too much because they have a more sophisticated firepower than the police are. And you know, um, because of the way the police interact with people in the community, there isn't much respect for the police anymore. Interesting. As, as much as we, I'm trying to coin this nicely, as much as we look at the issues of our soldiers being stretched, the police being stretched, mm -hmm. do we also have a role to play? Because this, the speaker also talked about the fact that they, he's been to Zamfara State, mm -hmm. he's been to Bornu, and he said the situation is almost the same everywhere he goes. The yeah. issue of kidnappers, he says, is the major problem here. Though things have started, uh, have somewhat subsided because the governor has done much, if there is a un unified problem in the north, mm -hmm. 
And there's so many, there's a North, I think there's a North, North North Governors Forum mm. or something like that. If one person, for example, has been able to deal with the issue, let's say Zamfara, mm. how come there's no synergy of sorts to help, you know, deal with the issue along those lines? Because he's saying he's been to Zamfara and Borneo states and now he's in Katsina and it seems to be the same thing. It is the same problem. That's, remember I said it's a Northern problem. And a Northern problem deserves a Northern solution. I would suggest that the governors come together and compare notes and put forward. Maybe, you know, we've been screaming repeated, repeat, repeatedly for a state police. Now, if you had state police, if you had somebody who was brought up in Suruleri, the person that's brought up in Suruleri will know the bad people. And the person that's brought up in Suluri we know through his network when strangers come into the place. Hmm. And I'm told from my interaction with the police that before any kidnapping could be done, people would have come to canvas the place and monitor the victim. Hmm. Interesting. So the issue of drug abuse and trafficking is also, um, and accompanied by arms trafficking is also, hmm domiciled in the north. Um, recent, I think it was two years ago when the National Assembly banned Tramadol. cough syrups, mm. yes, and tramadol and, and all of those things because mm. it was domiciled in the north. But there were several other practices. Now, the emir of the Sultan of Sokoto, if I'm not mistaken, last week or two weeks ago had mentioned that the reason for these uprisings and the fightings, infightings in the parts of the country is because of politicians. That there is some form of a religious war that is going on in Nigeria, and he's saying that politicians are the problem. Well, we um, history and has shown us that politicians need boys that would fight for them, because that is the, that is the way we understand our politics in Nigeria, and I pray that era will soon go away. So now a guy who has been armed and who has been collecting large sums of money, all of a sudden after the election, you leave him redundant. What do you think he will do? He will now think of a way because his mouth is already wide. And a mouth that is wide, before it can come down, it will take a lot of things for it to come down. So what do you, what do, you do? You need, he needs to now think of other avenues. And what other avenues? The avenues are armed robbery, which is very, very risky. Because once the police catches you with gun, they shoot you. Or kidnapping, which is tactical, and which very soon will be very, very risky too in Nigeria. So, the, so that's why there's an upsurge in this thing. And also the lifestyle, you, you, you're a policeman, you're watching somebody that you're guiding, who, is, who you're older than, and he's, he has so much money, he has so much cars, you'll be asking God, what happened to me? You know, so there's so much disparity. So, and then the, when, when they take, some people take these drugs to escape from their reality. Mm. Why some take these drugs? Just to just to belong, and so many reasons. So these are part of all all the all the social problems they have in the north. Thank you for saying that they are social problems. By the way, I'm not saying that there are not other issues, mm. but the underlying thing mm. is social. Mm. Now we, I may be wrong, but please correct me. You're way older than I am. These traditional rulers, these um, emirs or sultans or onis or mm. obongs. Mm have a number one duty to reinstill value in society. They're supposed to be the poster child mm. of values or doing right in society. Mm. How well do you think that our, um, let's not go to the religious guys, but the, our traditional rulers and our kings, how well have they been able to help the people in remolding these values? Because it seems like we have totally lost them. And we always are quick to point fingers at you know, politicians. But I always ask, where do these politicians come from? Okay, let's take up north. We have, there is an Almajiri problem. Now, you have maybe one million Almajiri. If they are not trained, they turn up to be one million people that are after, people that are well off, people that are bitter because they don't understand their things. And I've, I've heard that um, uh, Reverend Father Matt, Matthew Kuka offered to train them and it was rejected. So somebody somewhere is making money from keeping these children 
um, poor and using them to collect arms and using them to perpetrate whatever. That armagery system has to be taken care of soon so that they don't have an implosion mm. up north. Now you have somebody who did not go to school, who is used to and who has an entitlement culture and then you, how can you not train that person to learn to work and do anything? He will not. He will not end up being a political thug or, or a kidnapper or an arm robber or whatnot. Why do we have to wait till the situation goes bad before we hear the emirs speak, the kings or the Igwe's speak? We hardly hear them speak. The only time we hear them is when it's politics or when we're celebrating a public holiday or a religious holiday where they have to speak mm -hmm. ceremoniously. And we also have a traditional rulers council across the country where these people meet and rob mines. Yeah. I keep asking, we have these groups, people are giving, giving um, impressed, you know, for sitting or sitting allowances. What impact does it make in society? Because we're having security challenges spread across the Federation and just Katsina is just one flashpoint. Well, um, first of all, it is like being in a Sorok. When you get to a Sorok, you find, I don't know how it happens, but you're now surrounded by sacrifants who now cocoon you out of the reality. And I remember one head of state we had, wonderful guy. He, he goes out at night in a Volkswagen and wears a, a knicker and goes around and talks to people because they don't expect him. He has a face cap. They don't expect him to be. So he talks to people. He gets first-hand impression of what is going on. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, they don't have that creativity. They now depend on those hangers on who we like to tell them, yes, sir, the country is running fine so that he'll be happy and he can do whatever they want to do. So that is it. And that's the same thing with this, with this MS. They cannot go out ordinarily, but they need somebody to tell them, Oga, see this situation. We have to do something about this armagery. We must do it. How do we get that sincerity of purpose? How do we get people who are not necessarily yes men because the truth is the simple man gets hurt mm. in all of this more and more people are dying people are missing uh, there are stories of people being kidnapped a, a friend a colleague of mine um, former colleague who's on radio in Port Harcourt said two of his friends had an accident and they called some two other of their friends to come and help them mm. while those people were trying to take them to the hospital they were kidnapped. You see, you see, it's, it's the callousness of the situation. Let's let's go back to Lagos. Um, the shop right thing. Look at the way the people came and zoomed in on another person's things. That shows you that um, um, there's a lot of uh, there's no more empathy for people anymore. There's there's the we and the them. Okay, you have a car, you must be rich. Forgetting that maybe you're paying 20,000 Naira every week to pay off that car. And maybe you're using it for taxify. Nobody sees that. But just that you have a car, you have a flashy car, you're wearing suit. It's not everybody that wears suit that is okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So finally, how do we... Because we've spoken about these leaders of thoughts, mm. we've speak, spoken about... Because it, at this point, it, our politicians seem to be paying a lot of lip service. I mean, good thing the speaker has gone to Zamfara, he's gone to Borunu, and yes, he's in Katsina. Mm. But where do we go from here? We have, we have to have a set, a group of people that don't take no for an answer. A group of people that will say we must have a change. And the change now, the mindset Who change. Who is this group of people that we must have? Where are they going to come from? Before, there used to be civil societies, but I don't know where the we civil societies. We still have civil society. Yes, uh, we have still civil societies. We just don't know what, how sincere their purposes uh -huh. are. So, so that's why I said before, they used to be known as civil societies. But we still have civil societies, and there are one or two that are working. But the work is too much for them. They're swamped. So this, but the first thing I think the North should handle as of a matter of urgency is the Almagery. Because you have to take, start, start, start the situation from youth. Well, in Kaduna mm -hmm. State, I was in Kaduna State in February or March mm -hmm. this year, and we visited so many schools. So the, the Almageries are gradually getting off the streets mm -hmm. because of the school feeding program. 
where they literally just go to school and they are fed morning till night. Mm -hmm. But then the other problem is that they're overfilling the schools and there are no spaces, so some of them have to learn like in open air. Mm. But that's working in Kaduna. I can only speak for mm. Kaduna State. I don't know about the rest of the states. And we're seeing those Almagiris here mm. in Lagos. And the head Boronu State is doing a good job. On He's built a, a, a lot of schools. And I keep wondering if he can do that under fire. What would he do when the, if, if, the, if, the, if the state were relatively safe? So kudos to him. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you. Obi Ajegbo is a lawyer. She's uh, still going to be here in the studio. She's not going anywhere. When we come back, we'll be talking about SDG goals for Nigeria in education and health. There's a report that's saying we may not be able to achieve it come 2030. We'll talk about it after the break. Stay with us.